There have been at least two fires inside subway cars over the past five days. On the subway in Brooklyn, we know at least 13 people are hurt. Two oh. subway crimes surging in New York City. The MTA. Welcome back to another video. Today I am in the nice city of New York here in, in the United States of America. As you can see, I am in a subway car. This is New York City Metro, New York City subway, the infamous subway that is connecting millions of people every day in this city. And I just came here to make this video to try to have a feeling and make a short comparison between this subway system and some of the coolest, most modern subway systems in China. So I received so many comments about the videos I've made of subways in China. Many complaints about the subway in New York saying it's all dirty, outdated, and I have to come here by myself to take a look and check it out and compare. Less than 30 years ago, in China, then a country with a population of just over 1.1 billion inhabitants, you could only find subway systems in three cities. If you didn't live in Beijing, Tianjin or Shanghai, underground travel was a complete mystery. Today, there are 45 metro systems in operation, with around 300 lines with expansions and brand new systems in the pipeline making subterranean transit accessible to some 360 million people. New lines grew quickly in cities concentrated in the densely populated southeastern region. As of 2022, the total length of metros in China's urban areas cover more than 9,500 kilometers. The scale and speed of development of China's rail system is unprecedented. Public transit provides relief from China's urban traffic congestion. When you think of New York City, the iconic subway system often comes to mind. But how safe is it to ride the New York City subway? The New York subway system is one of the world's largest, oldest and most complicated with 472 stations. But crime and fear has become a real issue for the system. This train car filling up with smoke and you can see passengers covering their faces. The overall subway crime rate spiked in April 2020 as COVID-19 gripped New York City. But now, riders who were driven away by the pandemic are returning to the system, but perhaps more slowly because of headlines about stabbing, robberies, and people being shoved in front of trains by strangers. We were using the subway going uh, uptown, and um, there is a big delay of these trains because somebody got injured, probably somebody tried to kill himself on the tracks and now the whole system is delayed. Now we gotta change the train to go there. Another of the issues and complaints from many of the users of subway here in New York, it's safety. Like right now, it's nighttime and we are going to Midtown. We are in downtown right now. And basically the station is empty, not many people, and it doesn't feel safe at all. Like there's only one agent in the entrance, but all the trucks are super empty and kind of creepy. But crime is not the only issue here. Many city residents have said they feel threatened by homeless and mentally ill people in the transit system. Violently shoving another woman into an oncoming train in the Times Square subway station. It sounds like the situation is out of control. And it is hard to believe that in a city as iconic as the Big Apple, you can see so little effort to control the countless safety issues that happen every day.
something that got my attention recently. I've been in major stations here in New York City. Like this is Penn Station. And last night we were at Times Square and we saw some police officers in these stations. So I wonder if this is something new. I, I, I'm not sure because as I said, safety was one of the issues or is one of the issues when you're using the subway system here in New York. Actually, most of the city, depending on the time, you need to be aware because it might be a little bit like unsafe. However, it got my attention that I've seen some police officers in this station. So my people or my subscribers here in New York, uh, how does it work? It's like all the time it's like that or is it something new or it's like they're trying to implement like a safety thing around here or how does it work? Let me know because I'm really, really curious about this. China's first subway system was launched in 1971 in Beijing and was named as Line 1, but it was snail space growth. Nevertheless, the booming Chinese economy following its opening up in the 1980s generated demand for an efficient urban transit system. The extraordinary infrastructure expansion has produced spectacular results with nine of the world's 12 largest subway networks located here in China, including cities like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Chengdu, Hangzhou, Wuhan, and Nanjing. There is one key difference between the subway systems we can find in the US and the ones in China, and it is standardization. While in America, most of the cities use different types of trains and tracks for each system, in China, the big majority of the cities use the same type of trains and tracks. I am not sure about the reason why this is happening in America, but here in China, this is directly related to the importance that the authorities and the designers put on the efficiency when they plan and build infrastructure. To sum up, in China, government is making smarter choices for the benefit of their people. While in America, the government is more likely to benefit corporations rather than regular people like you and me. Even though the train system, the railway system here in the United States is not the best in the world, it certainly has a very beautiful and impressive station. This is Grand Central here in New York City. And despite having a very horrible and a little bit dirty subway system, this station is really, really impressive. It is not a secret that New York City subway is not aging well. One of the main reasons, lack of maintenance and investment. The Metropolitan Transportation Authority's budget for the subway maintenance has barely changed when adjusted for inflation from what it was 25 years ago. Century old tunnels and tracks routes are crumbling, signal problems and car equipment failures occur twice as frequently as a decade ago. But hundreds of mechanic positions have been cut because there's not enough money to pay them even though the average total compensation for subway managers has grown to well over $200,000 a year. Daily ridership has nearly doubled in the past two decades to 5.7 million. But New York is the only major city in the world with fewer miles of track than it had during the World War II. Efforts to add new lines have been hampered by generous agreements with labor unions and private contractors that have inflated construction costs to five times the international average. New York Subway now has the worst on-time performance of any major rapid transit system in the world, according to data collected from the 20 biggest. Just 65% of weekday trains reach their destination on time the lowest rate since the transit crisis in the 1970s when graffiti-covered cars regularly broke down. This is a little creepy experience here in the Philadelphia subway system. It's dark and very, very smelly and it looks very dangerous. <laughs> I didn't know that. Like, I'm really planning to go back 
uh, to the train station by taxi because the experience so far has been uh, not pleasant at all since the moment we were purchasing the ticket because in New York you can use your credit card to enter but here you cannot the purchasing ticket was like a oh my gosh I'll tell you five interesting facts about subways in China. The first subway line opened to the public in Beijing in 1971, making it mainland's first metro system. Beijing Subway, it is the official English name, setting apart from its counterparts in Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and elsewhere, which opt for metro. As of December 2021, when two new lines were opened, the total length of the Shanghai metro was 831 kilometers, the longest metro system in the world. In July 2017, CNN published an article with the headline, China's metro station in the middle of nowhere. They were referring to Caojiawan station in Chongqing, which looked to be in the middle of nowhere, basically. Fast forward to 2023, however, you will see a very different picture. The capital of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region is home to the mainland's farthest west metro. Announcements are given in Mandarin, English, and Uyghur. Furthermore, all signs are written in Uyghur script as well as both in English and Chinese characters. I am back here in China. I'm happy to be back actually, even though I enjoyed my trip in America because I was seeing so many differences to what we can actually find here, especially when it comes to riding a subway system. Here is a completely different story, a completely different experience. There are many, many huge differences and I would say the main ones would be cleanliness. Like when you are in a subway system here in China, everything is so clean, so pristine, so bright. You have lights everywhere which makes the whole experience more enjoyable, at least in my case. The second one is pricing. You pay for that trip in New York 2.9 US dollars per ride, no matter how far or how close you go. Here in China, it's a different way to calculate the fares, so if you go farther, you pay more. So if you just go a couple station, perhaps, you're gonna pay less money. But actually, the average price that I pay here every day for a ride is around four renminbi, which is almost 50 cents of dollar. And that is like five times, no, wait a second. This is like, well, that is a huge difference <laughs> between prices. So 50 cents of dollar per ride versus almost three US dollars per ride. That's what you pay in New York for a much better experience here in China. Well, that's something to think about. Talking about my experience in Philadelphia, I didn't film too much because since the moment I entered the subway, I felt first very unsafe. People were consuming drugs in the stations, on the trains. I was with a friend and I felt really, really unsafe in that uh, subway system, so I told her, this is going to be the only ride we're gonna take here. From now on, once we reach downtown, we're gonna move around by taxi because I don't really wanna take the risk to go back again and ride this subway because I don't want to be killed or robbed or kidnapped or anything like that. So <laughs> really I was feeling so uncomfortable riding that subway in Philadelphia. That's the reason why I didn't take too much footage. The other bad experience that I actually have in Philadelphia was when I was purchasing the ticket to enter. We have to pay with cash. That's the only way you can get the ticket through uh, this vending machine. I put the cash, I get my ticket, and the machine was supposed to return around seven US dollars in cash, but the machine didn't give it to me. So I have to call one customer service assistant to help me out and see what was going on. When he came, he actually told me that these homeless people put some cards in the place where the machine is supposed to return the money to block it so people won't get it back. So when you leave, they will come and take the cash that was supposed to be for you. 
So it's a way for them to make some money out of the people who are riding the subway. That was crazy, that blew my mind because he knew what was going on. He just came here and so naturally, he just opened that little gate where the cash is coming out from and they just returned the cash because he was there. It was just blocked by another car. That gives me a hint of actually how bad this subway system are being maintained. Like the whole station was really smelly, dark, felt unsafe. So the experience was not pleasant at all. In contrast, here in China, as you can see through other of my videos and some of the footage I'm sharing in this video, you can see what a huge difference exists between the two countries when it comes to public transportation. The efficiency, the prices, the safety, the cleanliness, the whole environment of riding a subway system here in China is mind-blowing. That's why I wanted to make this video trying to compare a little bit what is the experience of going on a subway in cities like New York, San Francisco or Philadelphia compared to cities like Shenzhen, Beijing or Guangzhou here in China. Folks, I'm going to be wandering around nice and beautiful places here in China and documenting about it. I will also be Instagramming my day today and my trips in this awesome country. Feel free to follow me and leave your comments and impressions over there about life in China. I will leave the link to my account in the description down below. Remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my follow-up stories about what's going on in this part of the world. If you think there might be someone else interested in these kind of videos, please consider sharing. My name is Rafael, thanks for watching and stay safe until next time.